there goes my daughter in her hot rod Lincoln. All right, hello again. Welcome back to Twin Stick Garage, where I've got way too many projects and not enough Saturdays. But old Twin Sticks never gives up. So as you know, if you've been following the build, I mean, I think this Peterbilt build's coming up on the 100th episode. So maybe what I try and aim to do is by the time I get to the 100th episode, it's in paint. So I think that's going to be my new goal. So as you've been following along the last few episodes, I've been working hard trying to get the body work done on this thing and get it prepped for paint. Uh, everywhere I looked, there was always something. And uh, so I just, I've been coming out here in my evenings and spare time just trying to, to finish the last few little corners and last few little things up, uh, trying to spot any, any rough spots and try and get it into primer. So I've been, uh, I've been really putting in the hours. But then, as you also know, I've been trying multiple colors. So I tried a uh, blue color called uh, 187, and I didn't really like that. And then I tried another color. I forget what that one was, and that one was kind of eh. So I went to C-Max, and I was talking with a, a real knowledgeable guy there by the name of Mark. Great name. And uh, he was helping me out, and he and I both agreed that I need to put on my big boy pants, and I need to man up and graduate from single stage paint that I've been that I did on uh, the snowman truck and move and transition into base clear because what that'll allow me to do is go to uh, add metallics so as I mentioned in the last video I really wanted to get kind of a metallic look on this truck this truck is just so special I've been working on it for so many years and uh, it's kind of the flagship of my channel and it's just my dream truck so I wanted to really have something that pops so I've got some new paint. I'm gonna uh, touch up the door panel there, the driver's door panel, and uh, and lay that down. And hopefully, I'm gonna follow the uh, the timeline there. The uh, I think it's 15 minutes per coat, and then two hours, and then you put the clear on. So hopefully, by the, sometime in this episode, we get to see what the final color will be. I'm really digging the name of this one. It's called uh, well, it's Hyundai, but it's Montana Big Sky base coat i just i just thought that was so cool and mark actually helped me hop it up a little more i'm like i really want that 70s metallic bolt look so he he stepped up he went like 10x on the metallic flake so we'll see how that turns out and i'm really looking forward to it with that i'll uh, i'll get rolling on this episode and like i say one more step closer to getting this thing in paint so i think we have a winner All right, to try and combat the awful smell inside Project Pork Chop, I thought I'd get this uh, odor stuff. So what you do is you lock this stuff and it just starts spraying. <laughs> new car. Yeah, this thing's a long way from a new car smell. But you're supposed to just bomb it and leave it inside and then close all the doors. So let's give this a go. Oh. <laughs> Spray away. All right, we'll come back to that later and see if I can at least drive this thing with the windows up. And now I also mentioned in the last episode how I was trying to figure out the logistics of this thing, being able to have the hood open and then the door down on my drum fans to kind of exhaust all the paint fumes out and then have enough room to wiggle by. So what I did was I actually aired the truck up, released the brakes and then pried it back, almost touching the, uh, almost touching the workbench there. And what that'll allow me to do is, I'm thinking the path I'm gonna paint this truck in is I'll probably have the lid down. And well, of course, once I get past priming and then I end up painting it, paint the hood. And then when it tacks, tip it open 
and then I can scramble up there and then do the roof and then do the cab that way. Now, in between is going to be a little tricky. I, uh, I've got my, my steps from Princess Auto, but they're, they're nice and solid. But I'm worried that the, as I lift them in and out of there, I guess if I'm careful, it should be okay. Because I'll have to climb up on there to do the roof cap and then take that out of there and then paint all the way down the front and back. But what Mark was telling me, we were trying to do the math on this and we've come up with, I'm gonna have to paint this truck probably 10 times, if you can believe it, or 10 coats. So follow me on this. So I've got to put on the, uh, and this will hopefully be in next week's episode, uh, I'm gonna put on the uh, etching primer. So I picked up a couple quarts of etching primer because what you wanna do when you go down to bare metal like this, especially aluminum, is you wanna have something that really adheres to the metal so the paint doesn't flake off. You see Chevy and Dodge trucks where big pieces of paint will just fall off the truck. That's because they didn't adequately prep the base primer. So I'm gonna do a coat of etch primer on all the metal, and then I'll do two coats of high build, uh, my typical 2K high build primer. So fill in all the remaining scratches, and I went and picked up another gun from Princess Auto. They were on sale, so I had to grab that. So I'll put the primer on, and then after the primer, I want to sand it down to, I got some 320, what else do I got here? Yeah, I got some 600. So I will go down once it's in primer and once that hardens, I'll go over the whole truck, 600, get it ultra flat, just kind of prep myself for as much success as possible with this and the best paint job that I can accomplish. And then, then I got to start on the base clear. So if this works, I would do two or three coats, maybe even four coats of base. And then I'd have to let that dry and then I'd have to do the clear. Now, because I'm a beginner, well, I guess I'm not a, uh, I'm not a um, freshman. I'm probably a sophomore painter because I did paint one truck already, but this will be number two. So after that, I'd have to put on at least, I'm thinking two, three, possibly how ambitious I am, maybe four coats of clear. That way I'll have lots of clear to wet sand and buff, lots of thickness there to try and get it as flat as possible and get this thing just looking like glass. So that's the plan. So what is that? I mean, in my head, that's, that's at least 10 times, 10 coats of paint on this truck. And this is a lot of area to cover. Now, if it was just painting a wall, that wouldn't be such a big deal, but I'm going to be up and down and, and around and it's, it's going to be, it's going to be quite a project. So I'm thinking, I'm envisioning probably a Saturday for the primer and then a Saturday for the base and then maybe the next Saturday for the clear, just because it's gonna be exhausting trying to paint everything uh, all in one Saturday. And then I was also trying to think about what I'm gonna do with the hood. My buddy Cy there at uh, Psycho 77, he, I went and looked at his peat, I mentioned it in the last video. Man, his peat is just incredible. And what they did with the paint job on that is they actually painted the underside of the hood the same color. So I suppose I could probably, you know, reach in here. I could probably paint most of it. I mean, it wouldn't be perfect, but again, it's under the hood. And then I'm thinking I could even cover up my undercoat with the blue as well. I don't know, I'm gonna have to think about that. But the idea being is that at least it would match. I think that white's gonna stand out a little too much. But yeah, so with that, I'm gonna get rolling here. I'm gonna try not to uh, bore everyone to death with my talking. It's too late. And I will get started on painting this because I really wanna see how that base clear turns out. Spray tan's definitely not as good as a gun, but I'm doing my best. Or something like that. Okay. So while that dries, it says you can uh, you can paint after uh, 30 minutes. Paint in as little as 30 minutes. So we'll set a timer, and I'll uh, make me use of the minutes inside the minutes like I always do. Oh man, 
just an incredible amount of work. And as I've said before, if you think it's dull watching it, it's even worse doing it. But it's just, it, it's gonna be such a treat at the end when I, when I get it done. But just going back over it, I need to go front to back to make sure that every little spot, I mean, there's some paint there that I haven't sanded smooth yet. And basically just look at every square inch from the front to the back and then do it over again and try and get it as good as possible. Because again, I'm trying to hedge. I'm not a professional painter. If you've been following this channel for a while, you know that I'm just, I'm self-taught. I haven't been formally trained in any of this stuff auto body or mechanics and I'm just kind of learning as I go but hopefully I'm good inspiration for folks that uh, that may have bought an old Peterbilt or Kenworth from uh, Marketplace or Ritchie Brothers and dragged it home I mean the mechanical stuff is fun it's uh, it's quick it's uh, it's rewarding because if you put a new transmission in or you put something new on you put new wheels on that's that's a quick bump for your brain on uh, and reward but the auto body is where you kind of get stalled out but it's so worth it because not only from a fulfillment standpoint, but also from a cost saving standpoint. So if you take, um, if you take the snowman truck, I probably put maybe all in $3,000 into that. And that would include all the, the, the bottle body materials, sandpaper, the, the primer, the paint. Of course, it doesn't take into account my time, but $3,000 all in and I got a painted truck. Whereas that would be 30 or 40,000 at a, uh, at a body shop. So you can really save yourself a lot of money. If you've got a, a project at home, you got an old car, an old truck by taking a uh, stab at painting it yourself. And don't worry. I mean, if you don't have any experience again, it's worth trying. If I, I'm a firm believer, if you if you respect the process that you can get a decent job out of it. I mean, my biggest learning on snowman was probably the fact that you have to respect the time the, the flash off time. So when you put the, when I put the first coat on there, I got rolling away there and I was excited and it was wet. So it looked really good. Just kind of like when you're at the car wash. So I went and mixed up another batch and then off I go with the second coat. But what ended up happening was it uh, paint needs to flash off or release all the gases. And you got to give that time for it to do that to flatten out. So you don't want to, if it says wait 20 minutes or 25 minutes in between coats, you want to set a clock and have it in your, on your workbench and make sure you don't start putting a second coat on until that time for the flash occurs. Otherwise you encapsulate it and you get what's called orange peel. Now, even if you get orange peel, you can still fix that. I mean, you remember on snowman, I actually, I fixed that by, you get yourself a sponge and a 2000 grit uh, sanding uh, palm sander and you just start hand sanding the entire truck and then you get out the buffing wheel. So it can be fixed. But if, if you, again, if you follow the process, you may not have to do quite as much sanding and buffing. Uh, so that, that was a learning, but I, I really encourage you if, if you, not only is it very rewarding, but like I say, it's a, it's a big savings in your pocketbook if you're willing to, to take a stab at it and put the effort in, but you gotta get over this, the, uh, the body work hump. It's, it's just, it's brutal. I mean, look how many episodes I've been doing this and that's not, I don't even have all of the, uh, the Saturdays and evenings sanding this all down. But if you can get through that, the painting's the fun part, although putting 10 coats of paint on this truck is probably not gonna be that much fun. But uh, yeah, I, uh, I really encourage you to give it a, to give it a stab, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. All right, I'm really hoping this is the one. Montana Big Sky Base Coat. Something that's just so cool about that. Now, base clear. So as I mentioned, I did single stage on Snowman. And what single stage is, is it saves you a few coats of paint on the uh, on the vehicle you're painting because it's got the the base color and the clear coat mixed together and you kind of put them on both at the same time so you only have to paint the truck you know a couple times for primer and then a couple coats of single stage in your mint but base clear is a little different but i think you get a better result and it allows you more flexibility when it comes to um, adding metallics and pearls and getting the you know that new car when, when there's a metallic paint job on a hot rod or something and you kind of look in the sun and it changes color and there's metallics and there's different colors there. That's the pearl and the clear coat that makes it shiny. So this being base and then I'm going to do clear after, it's going to go on more matted. It's almost going to be like the primer, kind of a matte finish. And then the clear coat afterwards just makes it pop. Now with painting, a couple of tips that I've learned by watching uh, people that know a lot more than me is uh, one person mentioned, oh, I'm already getting dust and bugs in there. Uh, it's not a final panel, but 
I should give this away, sign it twin sticks and then give it to some fans. But um, someone mentioned that I was watching there, they said you gotta have like a robotic arm. So if you think of the arms, the, the, the uh, automated arms at the uh, Ford and Chevy dealer or manufacturing facilities, they're just very robotic. They're perfectly straight because they're programmed to run on a track, right? So you want the same thing, just straight and you don't want to vary your distance to and from the paint. So that was one tip. And the other one is, as I was saying, respect the process. Ask your paint, uh, your paint to supplier about the overlap that you're looking for as well. So is it a 50% overlap? So you spray and then you go halfway up, the halfway of the thickness, and that's your 50% overlap and just keep doing that. Or some paints, when you're gonna lay it on a little thicker, it might be 70% overlap. So then you only go up 30%. So you kind of paint over and you're only going up a little bit at a time on the panel. So those are, those are some of the uh, twin stick tips. There's a lot of good painting channels out there. Uh, Paint Society is one of my favorites. I find him an excellent teacher. So go check him out on YouTube. He's got a lot, he's a professional painter. So you should probably listen to him more than twin sticks, but. Okay, Mark, stop yammering on and let's get this, uh, let's lay down this blue. Now your first coat is kind of the coat you want to have where you're, it's almost like putting on glue. That's the way I think about it because you don't want to lay it on too thick. Now with the spray can, you can't really change your flow. I guess you could change your speed, but you don't want to lay it on too thick. It's just kind of the coat that's allowing you to really lay it on thick in the second and subsequent coats. So something like that. Now this is very similar. I guess I can take this off. This is very similar to what I did last in the last episode with just a single stage blue because it had kind of the clear coat in with it, but it kind of turned out matted like this and I didn't really like it. So I'll wait till this flashes off. And then uh, Mark told me 15 minutes. So I'll set the timer for that. Again, respect the time, respect the process. I'll put a second coat on, maybe even a third coat. And then I'll wait two hours and put on the clear and then this should really pop. I got two hours to kill before I can put the clear coat on. You'll probably notice in the video in the time lapse there, the, the number one rule of painting is don't stop or don't try and go back. The problem I had with the, uh, the spray bomb was the air was coming out and it was, as the can was finishing up, it would kind of spit and sputter and then no paint would come out. So then I went back. But then if you make a mistake, just try and go over it. You can always sand it out later. Again, worst case scenario, you sand the whole mess down and paint it all over again. So there was a tiny hole that I actually found that I didn't even know was up there on top of the roof. So perfect time to fill that. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of, man, even when you clean up your, uh, your workbenches, any flat surface just turns into a workbench and you end up uh, using up all the space. But I figure I'll use a little bit of uh, Bondo glass. So this is a short strand reinforced fiberglass filler. So it's basically Bondo with a little bit of fiberglass in there. I think this will go nice on the uh, on the top of the roof cap since it's a fiberglass roof cap. Now get some of those juices in there and mix it up a touch. I'm not going to need much. The more you add the more you have to sand off so probably something like that's all I need to fill that little hole. Now with cream hardener you want to add enough that it actually hardens but uh, the more you add, the faster it hardens. Plus this stuff ain't cheap. It's about eight bucks for a little bottle. So if you've got a, a little patty of, of filler on there, I usually just put a, a bead right across it and then that's more than enough. Now, where's my new, I thought I bought a whole bunch. Yeah, I did. Now I actually got myself some uh, metal spatulas. I was watching some professionals on YouTube there and. And they had these metal spatulas and you just kind of work them, work the, uh, the filler and mix it up that way. So maybe the next time I mix up some Bondo, I'll use that. 
Now with this, I'm thinking I might actually take the fenders off so this board sits flat because right now it's tilting me into the into the top of the bunk, which if I was gonna fall a certain direction, I'd wanna fall into the bunk. But of course, when it comes time to paint, I don't wanna be leaning in. I wanna be kind of standing up straight. And it's this is gonna be a hell of a job. I don't know how guys do this on 63 inch sleepers because if I hold myself, I can actually get to the center line because I'll come from the other side and get to maybe the center and then I'll grab the wet edge and try and bring it back. But I don't know how I'm gonna hold myself. I wonder if I hang a rope or a ring from the roof and hang from that. Anyway, get going on the fiberglass, Mark Ford Hardens. Almost wish I had a small 36 inch bunk. Oh, well, that's probably more than I need. Probably something like that. Oh, maybe a bit, bit more. Some is good, more is better. I'll press it in to make sure it goes into that little hole. I wonder if there was an antenna on this roof or, or what the deal was. Nah, well, we'll just putty that in there and let it harden and it shouldn't leak after that. like a smurf just covered in blue dust but it's getting there it's just uh like i always say it's a slow process but it'll pay off in the end so while i have a little coffee break here or uh refreshment i thought i might do something fun i got a little bit of mail a couple things in the mail if you want to send old twin sticks something there's a uh address in the description below and I'm always grateful for anything that folks want to send me that's just great let's see what we got going here this is from uh, Ryan in uh, Regina Saskatchewan all right fellow Canadian what did uh, what did he send me oh ho, ho, that is awesome Ryan thank you so much bandit one Saskatchewan how did you get this is this a I wonder well wait a minute now that I think about it I've been uh, emailing Ryan and Ryan was actually interested in purchasing the uh, Buford cop car that I found and uh, I don't know if he's actually got a bandit one because sometimes when you get a custom license plate they give you two and I'm trying to think in Saskatchewan do you need to have a plate in the back and the front maybe not Maybe you only need one in the back and he sent me his front plate, but that is really cool. Thank you for sending me that. Awesome. And then uh, got some more mail here. Oh, look at this. Someone actually drew my fleet. It's wicked. Look at that. It's got, uh, it's got uh, the snowman, LVL, Iron Duke, and then he even snuck in the Pork Chop Express in behind. Wow, that, uh, that's a fan who's paying attention. Beautiful, beautiful artwork. Oh, there's a spatula that I was talking about. Let's see, who sent me this? Uh, there's a letter in here. Let me take a quick look. Greetings, Mark. Sitting around playing or watching on the old YouTube and came across your site, Twin Six. Follow along for a few episodes, what you're about. I like your ambition and drive for the passion you have for old trucks. Well, oh, thank you. I have been a fan of Big Rig since I was a little kid. <laughs> Haven't we all? and have followed that all my life. While I near, never actually was a trucker, have been dreaming or drawing ever since. So thought I would scribble a little something for you to add to all the stuff your fans send you in the mail. Awesome. Thanks again. Great work. Keep it up. Love the Pork Chop Express rig. <laughs> well, it's a long way off, but uh, it'll get there someday. Snowman rig looks great. Iron Duke work in progress. Yes, it is a whip. Uh, as soon as I get LBL done, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna probably alternate between the Trans Am and the uh, Iron Duke because I got to get some progress on the Duke this winter. Uh, I can do hand-drawn pics of your rigs if interested. Larger sizes, of course. Oh, well, that would be lovely. Enjoy the summer. We'll talk later. Doug. Out of Barrie, Ontario. Another fellow Canadian at LucyKiller18 at Rogers.com. So yeah, reach out to Doug if you want some custom artwork done because like I say, he has a lot of talent. That is, uh, that is really cool. Oh, my awesome daughter is grinding away out there. 
trying to get the old 40-year-old uh, Dirty Bird off the uh, hood of the T8. And man, oh man, is it ever on there, but I appreciate her help. Apologies for the noise, but I like having the help. I gotta get that Trans Am sanded down. So it's gonna save me some time. Oh, the bugs are keep landing on my paint. Get off of there. All right, let's, let's put some clear coat on and see if this thing pops. and see how that works. All right, so the instructions on that can said bomb it off in there and let it sit for a while and then uh, air it out. Oh man, that's, that's way better. I don't know if I've just been inhaling too many paint fumes, but I think that it, uh, it gobbled up some of the stink. Should we give it a little tickle? Why not? Oh, 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 I love this truck. <laughs> oh, it's awesome. Yeah, it's a little better. It's a little better. I wonder if I got one more of those and bombed it off in the bunk. If that would help. Maybe next time I'm at the fleet break, I'll pick another one up. But yeah, definitely helped. Now it's uh, not quite so bad sitting in here. Uh, now we'll give Snowman a little tickle. So I'm gonna have to put that away in the shop. <laughs> I love my trucks. Beauty. So it's the next morning. And I just thought I'd give uh, the panel a little cut and buff to shine it up. Now, normally you'd let the clear coat harden for longer than just one night before you started buffing it. But again, this is just a test panel. And I'm digging the color. The color is OG little by little. It's, uh, it's a lot like the Sovereign Blue that uh, was on the bunk when I first started this uh, this whole mess. So I'm digging that, but I'm just, there's a little bit of sparkle there and I just, I don't know, I don't know if it's gonna quite get there. I might have to go back. I know you're probably getting sick of me painting these panels, but uh, I might have to go back and say, double it or triple it. Let's get some metallic flake in there because it's looking sharp. I can see the pearl in it, but it's just, it's not quite the, the metal flake sparkle that I was looking for. But we'll, uh, we'll clean this up and take it out in the sun and, uh, and see what it looks like with some sun shining on it. Now, I'm really liking that base clear. I think that's, uh, that's definitely the ticket. I think I'm officially done with, with single stage paint. A little more work. You got to go paint the panel or paint the truck like I say multiple times but but it's worth it oh yeah the color is just beautiful yeah upon second consideration looking at this in the sun when the sunlight starts to hit it that's when that metallic flake really starts to pop and Mark was telling me the more because obviously the flake is silver the more he puts in there the lighter it's going to make the uh the paint color and I just I'm loving the kind of the the sovereign blue and then when the sun comes out you get that uh, you get that sparkle so I think we have a winner